everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today I'm going to show you how to paint two cute little sparrows sitting in a tree. It's spring here now and lovely and warm and sunny and all the birds are out having fun playing around with one another and the temptation to paint them has become too great. So I've done a little sketch of two birds and if you want the sketch for your own work Go to dianeanton.com and for free you can download the sketch of the two birds without worrying about having to do the drawing first. Now I've got my sketchbook and I'm just choosing the colours that I'm going to use to paint the sparrows with and I'm trying out a couple of options. Um, the dark brown I've tried at the top there is Van Dyke brown and I've decided that uh, I need something a little bit more vibrant than that so this is um, burnt, burnt sienna. Um, and clearly that's going to work very well for the sparrows and here we've got um, Payne's grey and you could use neutral tints or you could use um, black or any other dark grey and so now here we are beginning the painting and uh, looking at the birds here and the first thing I'm going to do I'm painting wet on dry I'm not painting this wet on wet although there will be some wet on wet work within the painting and I'm just dropping in some burnt sienna here on the backs of the sparrows. I'm doing them both at once because they're very small drawings, they're quite tiny and they won't be taking very long to paint. So I can, uh, I can do them more or less one after the other without them drying too quickly. Now I'm coming back in having picked up some of my um, Payne's grey and that's making a darker grey, a darker brown there around the edges of the brown on the back of the bird. The bird's going to be painted in two layers so the first layer won't look very um, realistic then I'll come in with some finishing touches which will um, give more feathers and more detail to the actual plumage of the bird. So a sparrow has got uh, a kind of black bib and uh, quite a lot of black and grey in the tail and the wing there so I'm just dropping it in roughly and loosely but carefully. Um, but obviously as you know the colours always dry lighter um, in watercolour so you might think that this is going to be too dark but it, it probably won't be um, because it will um, sort of go back in colour, shade back several tones into a lighter um, colour. Now I'm just going in with a clean wet brush here and just touching the colours that I've laid in and allowing them to drag down into the breast of the bird just letting that paint flow to give uh, an interesting and natural effect there. Not playing with that too much, letting the watercolour do the work. And I'm going to then put a little bit of um, Payne's Grey in uh, the tail feathers there. Keeping the strokes broken as much as possible and light. For this style of painting you don't want to be too too careful. So already you can see that the the bird has um, a certain sparrow-like character and now we're going down to the other one on the branch below and the brown on his back is still damp so I can go in with the, the grey and that will do the same thing, it will blend where it touches giving a nice um, gentle gradation of colour without too much effort on your part. And uh, for the the, the top of the bird's head just making it wet so that the colour bleeds up into that area and the breast again the same thing. And once I've laid in this first coat I'm going to let that dry and meanwhile I will um, paint the leaves on the foliage around the birds starting with the stems of course, with the branch stems. But just indicating the legs of the birds there and the feet. Trying to remember always while I'm painting that less is more. And tempting as it might be to try to put in every feather, it's better not to really. I'm just doing a bit of lifting out there using a, a clean um, thirsty brush and just dragging some of the colour out to give a little bit more light there. Okay, so now the birds are just going to be left to dry for a few minutes and in the meantime I can continue on to paint with the, the, the twig that they're sitting on. 
So I've got quinacridone gold here and a little bit of sap green which I'm going to blend together uh, to make a, a light green and then I'm just going to drop that in very roughly um, into the pre-drawn um, branch that they're sitting on. I already drew that in so I know where I'm going to put that and that's just one one line of paint and I'm just going to leave it like that. You could do other things to it if you wanted to. You could add more colour but I don't think it's necessary because I'm going to put lots of leaves in. And then another branch going up in that direction and taking it down then behind um, and in the bottom area there. Keeping these colours quite light at this stage. And now I'm mixing up a nice bright mixture of quinacridone gold and sap green and I'm going to use this to paint some of the leaves. So the best brush to paint leaves with is generally speaking a large round. I've got a, a number 10 or 11, something in that order here. And I'm using the, the usual method of doing leaf shapes which is to start with the point at the top of the leaf, press down with your brush and then lift and uh, that will give you an oval shape which has quite a lot in common with the shape of many leaves. And try to use the minimum number of strokes to do this. You don't need to uh, go in again and again. You can get quite an effective um, leaf just by a couple of strokes. And if you want to change the colour later you can always wait for it to dry and then go in with a second a second. Um, coat, if you like, a second layer of, of paint. Or you can drop a little bit of stronger colour like this in, which will bleed into the wet paint where the dark paint touches the, the wet that you just put in, and that will give you a variation in your colour, which is nice. And you can be very free with this part of the painting. It's not um, specific to do the leaves in any particular place and I'm sure you, you have uh, plenty of imagination and you can come up with ways of painting the leaves on this, this uh, twig. You could of course put flowers on the branches as well, you don't have to just stick to leaves. I'm just building this up a bit. It's entirely up to you how, how many leaves you put on. You could put far fewer than this if you wanted to. Um, in my opinion, uh, by the time I got to the end of this painting, I'd probably put too many leaves on for my own liking. But um, the one problem with watercolour, of course, is you can't take them off again. But then the best thing to do is to just simply do the whole thing again, which I probably will. I like painting sparrows because they're a rather overlooked little bird and we have loads and loads, I think literally thousands of them live in our property here. They nest in the holly and the ivy and, and on the, in the walls and in the barns and everywhere. There are literally, literally hundreds if not thousands of them within a few miles here. <clears throat> no, not miles, what am I talking about? A few hundred yards at the most, hundreds and hundreds of sparrows within our acre of land. Anyway, uh, the birds are dry now and I'm going back in to add some of the details. And uh, I'm using my Payne's Grey here, or neutral tint would be good too. Neutral tint is a useful colour to have in your um, kit. It's, um, it's almost black, but it, what it does is it dulls down. The intention of it is that it's a neutral way of dulling down different colours if you add a little bit of it to green or to um, yellow or whatever, you'll get a, a more neutral, neutralised colour. So that's a handy one to have, but it also does a good job um, as a strong dark without being too overpowering like some of the blacks. Some of the strong blacks like um, carbon black are, are too much really, so this works quite well. And I'm just putting in some broken strokes to indicate the plumage on the back of the bird there and um, then I'm going to come back in and give a little bit more um, detail to the tail and the wing uh, again using my neutral tint or Payne's Grey 
And again, to, not to repeat myself too many times, but the color will lighten as it dries. So don't be afraid to make it a little bit dark. Otherwise you'll find you want to keep going back again and again and again, darkening down what you've done because it turns out to be too light and uh, you lose some of the spontaneity. And just put a little bit of shadow there on the chest keeping the tops of the heads light where it's refre reflecting the light. And the beak is always very small. I'm very prone to drawing the beak too big, but keep it small and make sure that the eyes are very close to the beak and that will give you more of a cute effect um, for the facial features of the bird. Make sure you don't put the eyes too far back in the head or too high up. Make them really close to the beak and let the beak kind of sit in to the face so it's not um, sticking out but rather indented. It's difficult to explain what I mean but you can probably see what I'm talking about. And now I'm just adding a little bit more variety to the colour of the leaves, just breaking them up a little bit where they run into one another a bit too much. There are various things I could have done at this point. I could have come in with some blue, for example, and uh, indicated a little bit of sky behind the birds, but I didn't do that. I just kept it very um, color restricted, very restricted palette with the um, sap green and the quinacridone gold, and then the two browns, the, the Van Dyke brown, um, the burnt sienna, and the neutral tint or Payne's gray for the actual birds themselves. So it's a, a quite um, fairly restricted palette painting, I would say. Not too many opportunities for things to clash or become discordant. Apart from the small details that I will need to use a tiny brush for, for the eye or for the beak, uh, perhaps I've done the whole painting using one large round brush, just a synthetic nylon, nothing special. Um, I've got some recommendations for materials and things that you might want to need in, or you might feel you need in the description below with affiliate links, which would be great if you can use those if you are going to visit Amazon to buy something. A um, little bit of commission there, a tiny bit of commission, which helps us keep the channel going, which would be very greatly appreciated. So I'm just adding a bit of spatter there and a few calligraphic lines to make the whole foliage thing a little bit more interesting. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the painting away and wait for it to dry before I decide whether or not I need to change anything or whether I'm going to tear it up and put it in the bin. Um, which hopefully we won't come to that. I've said before, and you know, I do believe this to be true, that you must give a painting time to dry naturally if you want to get it at its very best, because it is indisputable really, and I don't know the chemistry of it, I don't know why really it works, but the paintings, they do sometimes take two or three days to settle to their final, I don't know what the word is, final condition, so then you know whether or not the tones are right, whether the colours are right and everything. And in fact whether you like it or not. So three days after painting it, it was good enough to photograph. So here we are, the final picture. Hope you enjoyed watching me paint that. Do have a go. Humble little birds, the sparrows, but they deserve a bit more attention than they get. So thanks very much for being here and I will see you again soon. But I'll say goodbye for now and I hope you're having lovely weather like we are. So bye bye for now everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>